Have you ever tried to help somebody that doesn't need help? Have you ever invested time, money, energy, strength, hours of sleep? Have you ever invested your life in someone and then realized that that person really didn't appreciate your help? Or really doesn't appreciate it or, or, or doesn't need it. And then after all those hours, after all those uh, all those tears and all that sweat and all that help you've offered, you realize that that person stays in the same place they were. And it's like nothing really happened. Have you ever felt like that? See, I've done that so many times. I've been in, in situations where I've invested me and my wife also, we've been in situations where we've invested our lives, we've invested our time, we've invested a lot of money in people. And we realize that sometimes uh, that person or those people we started helping didn't really respond the way we expect them to. And sometimes it seemed like a waste of time. See, uh, sometimes helping others can be very, very hard. Sometimes helping even your own family can be very hard and very heartbreaking because you want the best for the other person. That's why you gave it all with love. And then finally, it seems like it's not enough. And um, so one of the things we've learned, some of the things I've learned uh, through those experiences, because sometimes... Even in those in that experience, we have made mistakes. We we have done things a way that later on we've said, you know what, we shouldn't have done that. We should we should have done this differently. So I want to talk to you about about three things you can learn <laughs> or you can know. Three things that I'll, will help you help others. That will help you remain sane, maintain your heart healthy in the midst of helping other people. Okay, so if you're ready, these are the three things. The first thing you have to know when helping others, so you want, will not end up hurt, so you will not end up in pain or end up feeling like nothing, it wasn't worth it or, or you know, if you don't want to end up like that, this is the first thing. You can't help someone who doesn't need it. That's the first thing we learned. So uh, since my dad uh, has worked with drug addicts for many years, one of the things I've learned through seeing all these examples and people that come to my house and come to seek for help is that um, you can have help someone who really feels that he doesn't need help. See, some people can be, and I've seen it so many times, people can be like sleeping in the streets, like they don't have anything, they haven't showered in weeks. And you ask them, hey, uh, I can help you. I know someone that can help you. And they're like, I don't need help. I can quit this whenever I want to. I'm okay. I'm good. It's, it's, all, it's all good. And, you know, and sometimes we can see the need. You know, we see how difficult it is for someone. And we know the answer. We know what they need to be able to get out of that situation, to be able to be free, to be able to have a better life. And we know we have the answer right here. And we're like, I have the answer. But if that person doesn't want the answer, and feels that they have the answer even though they do the same thing over and over and they end up in the same place. You can't really do anything about that. You have to understand that you can only help people that are willing to receive the help and are willing to ask for it, that are willing to give a step forward. See, sometimes uh, when people ask for help, even then I put certain levels of like tests Like, okay, if you want help, then do this. Come at this time tomorrow to this place. If you want help, then how about you put this amount of money for this and buy this resource so you can start reading this book and then we can meet and talk about it. So what I've learned is that you have to sometimes put certain levels of, 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 just to try the commitment of the other person. You can know if the other person really wants help they will do what needs to be done. They will make the sacrifices that need to be made to be able to receive the help and get better. Some people are not willing to do anything. They say, yes, I need help, but they want you to do everything for them. And there is a big problem with that because you cannot do everything for them. There are some things that only they can do and you can't. So that's the first thing. When someone needs help, remember, you have to, they have to realize that they need it and they have to be willing to do what needs to be done. And number two is very similar. It's about not taking responsibility. 
So sometimes we want to take responsibility for the problems of other people. I've done that before. Uh, when I first started helping people, I realized I wanted to help them more than they really wanted to change. And I started trying to help them, but believing it was my responsibility for them to change and not their responsibility. You know, it's kind of weird sometimes with all this because you try to help somebody, but you take it so personally. You take it so over, you know, sometimes people take it so much over their shoulders that when that person fails to really change, it's like you, you feel like you failed. But you know what? You're not able to control anybody. I, I realized that many years ago that I cannot control nobody. I cannot change anybody. I can just give them tools. I can just give them advice. I can just help them in one thing or another. But it is their choice. It will always be their choice to persevere, to go forward, to do what needs to be done. And even though some people might seem not able to do that, some people might seem like they, they're not capable of physically doing that. But still, in the midst of that, they can ask for help. They can say, you know, give me a hand and I, and I will go and I will continue. They can call somebody. They can search. Even, even people that are in the worst situations, they're able to make a choice. So it's always up to them. I can only control myself. They can only control them themselves. I cannot control them. And you cannot take responsibility, just as I've learned, for other people's problems, other people's process, other people's decisions. That's very important because if you do, you will end up feeling overwhelmed with helping others and that will not be good. Okay, and number three, uh, one of the things I've learned about helping others is help them in the long run. See, uh, some people, uh, sometimes I've, I've done this before, help people just to get rid of a symptom, right? So if they're, if they're having a problem with their husband, they're fighting all the time because of certain issue with her, their daughter, for example, because uh, the guy wants to treat her a certain way and she doesn't want it, so they're always fighting. Um, the, one of the things I can do is help them not fight and say, you know what, instead of fighting or responding like this, do this or do that. And, and try to keep the peace, try to keep the calm, right? I could tell them how to correct the symptom, which will really not do much for her, if I'm talking to her, will really not do much for her in the long run. Because in the long run, something else will come up and they will try to go back to the same way they did things and another thing will come up, another thing will come up. Because I, we're not going for the root issue. I'm not teaching her how to live a powerful life. I'm just teaching her how to avoid conflict with him. Instead of teaching her how to live a powerful life, teaching her about her identity, teaching her about how to how to create an environment in her house that always gives out peace and joy and happiness. So the long run, teaching people how to live in the long run is always more work and requires work for the other person. It requires work for me too, but it is so worth it. It is more worth to be able to give someone tools that will help them in the long run and will correct root issues. And, and, and one of the things I, for example, one of the, one of the people I, I talked to a while ago, uh, she was a, a woman that had problems with her husband and, uh, and she said, but I love him. And, I, and, I, and then I started talk, asking her questions. I was like, okay, so what do you think about love? How, what do you think about maybe loving somebody that doesn't love you or doesn't show you the love that Christ that Christ shows us, right? That doesn't it, it, it's not an example of God's love to your to you or to your family, uh, and and they were not married. So I was, why why are you with him? Uh, what is love for you? So I started asking questions about love, about what did she believe about love, about what was her heart behind the actions she was doing. So I could have just told her, you know what. Uh, just leave him or just, or, 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 you know, why are you with him? Just let, let that go or, or, or just try to maintain peace or look for, you know, but I tried to go even further than that and try to teach her what love was. So that, that was my, object, my objective at the end. Try to teach her what really is love for God and why God wants the best for us. So that in the next situation, in the next 
place she finds herself trying to you know connect with somebody if it's still with him or with somebody else she might realize what she's looking for and what kind of love she is really looking at looking for and what kind of love God wants her to have in her life so going after the root teaching her how to seek and how to look for relationships and healthy relationships is much better but it takes much it takes more work than just telling her to ignore the issue or telling her to try to keep peace. So that's kind of the idea of this, uh, to be able to help people be, uh, have the tools or have the, the help that will help them in the long run. I hope you liked this video and if you liked it, press the like button and let me know. I have a course, a free e-course on inner healing if you're you feel overwhelmed with life if you're having a difficult situation if you're if you're struggling with things from your past or or, or you just want to learn how to help other people that need inner healing that need to heal wounds from maybe when they were kids and when they were younger and they're suffering through this uh, i would like to invite you to be part of this course on inner healing just click on the link below and, uh, and you will be uh, taken to a page where you will be able to register for this course. And remember, subscribe to this channel to receive more classes like this. Thank you.